There's a lot of debate about what whistleblowing means, what exactly the attributes are that defines it. And I've written a lot about whistleblowing and have thought a lot about it. And I think that there's two real components to whistleblowing. One is the disclosure of wrongdoing, serious wrongdoing on the part of powerful factions. And the second one is to disclose that wrongdoing at some risk to yourself. So I think if you look at what the, the two criteria, the defining criteria are, he, he embodies both of those as, as purely as one can imagine. So he says, it is a great honor to be recognized for the public good created by this act of whistleblowing. However, the greater reward and recognition belongs to the individuals and organizations in countless countries around the world who shattered boundaries of language and geography to stand together in defense of the public right to know and the value of our privacy. Speaking truth to power has cost whistleblowers their freedom, family, or country. This situation befits neither America nor the world. It does not require sophistication to understand that policies equating necessary acts of warning with threats to national security inevitably lead to ignorance and insecurity. The society that falls into the deterrent trap known in cultural wisdom as shooting the messenger will quickly find that not only is it without messengers, but it no longer enjoys messages at all. It is right to question the wisdom of such policies and the unintended incentives that result from them. If the penalty providing secret information to a foreign government in bad faith is less than the penalty for providing that information to the public in good faith, are we not incentivizing spies rather than whistleblowers? What does it mean for the public when we apply laws targeting terrorism against those engaged in acts of journalism? Can we enjoy openness in our society if we prioritize intimidation and revenge over fact-finding and investigation? Where do we draw the line between national security and public interest? And how can we have confidence in the balance when the only advocates allowed at the table of review come from the halls of government itself? The road we travel has been difficult, but it leads us to better times. Together we can guarantee both the safety and the rights of the generations that follow. To all of those who have participated in this debate, from the highest official to the smallest citizen, I say thank you, Edward J. Snowden. I think what will be really most enduring is the lesson that he has taught all of us, the lesson about the power of a single individual to change the world, literally, through nothing more than a powerful choice.